Chapter 5, Lesson 3. In this lesson, we're going to use special count control structures and we're going to talk about using arrays in Alice. Let's do a quick review. We've been using control structures for a long time now. Remember, our control structure is a built in programming statement that comes with Alice. It allows you to control the order instructions are executed. We're going to really be focusing on repetition control structures for this lesson. Remember that we've been using count in lessons one and two. In many programming languages, it's actually called a for loop because we have the word for in it with whatever we're going to count to. So when you look at the bottom in Alice and you see something like for each in, this is a type of count loop. Another one is the each in together. We've been using the count loop. We know that we indicate how many times at the beginning that it's going to uh, execute or it's going to repeat the steps. Now the special count loops are used with arrays in Alice because arrays are going to have more than one object in them. And these special ones are what the ones we're going to use in our programs today. But before we can talk about an array, we have to start with what is a data structure. A data structure is a programming mechanism used for storing and organizing data. When you have a lot of objects on, on, in your world, sometimes you want them to work together or work in some kind of unison. And when there's a lot of them, you need some kind of way of storing and organizing them so they can work together. An array is one type of data structure. It is a container that holds groups of related items kind of like this egg carton right here. It's a container and it's holding related items. And they're in a particular order or sequence. Here's some important facts about arrays in Alice. An array has a name or identifier, so I'm not going to just call it a container. I am going to give it a name, just like I give my objects a name. The items in the array are stored in sequence, okay? so in a particular order. And the programmer determines this order or sequence when we add the items to the array. Lists have a particular size, which is the number of items in the list. Each position or item, you know, the, when you add an item to the array, it ha it's in a particular position. And this position has a number that's called an index. The first index is always zero. So it doesn't matter how big or how small or what the array holds. The first index is, or first position is always zero. The last index is always going to be one less the number of items in the array. For example, if you have five items, the first index is zero. So the last index is going to be four. So you can see that there's five items and the index numbers are zero to four. Let's take a look at an example in Alice. Here in my world, I have five tigers, and I want to organize them in a data structure. So I'm going to put them in an array. So this rectangle around the tigers represents the array, and the name of it is tigers. Usually an array is going to have a plural name, like tigers, because it holds more than one item. You can see that there are items in this array. There are five of them. They all happen to be tigers. They don't have to be, but they should be from the same superclass. So I don't want to mix bipeds with quadrupeds or with flyers or swimmers. So as long as they're in the same superclass, it's fine. These all happen to be the same object, but it doesn't, they don't have to be. The order of the items is going to be specified by the programmer. So even though I've got them in order here, I could have this one be the first one and I could have this one be the second one. I'm going to determine that when I add them to the array. The size of this array is five, because that's how many items I have. You can see that each one is in a position, and that position has an index. So the index isn't actually part of the array, but it's how it's organized. The first index is zero, and then the last index is four. So things to remember when you are going to do repetition with an array. There are built-in control structures that will reference an item in the array by its index. That's why the index is going to be so important, and you'll see that as we start to program. The two built-in ones are for each in and for each in together. For each in is going to reference each item one at a time by index, and it's going to go in order. So it's going to reference index 0, and then index 1, and then index 2. 
That's why it's so important as you as a programmer that you put in the items in the order that you want because for each and we'll do them in that order. And each and together is going to reference each item in the array simultaneously. So they're going to guide, do sort of like a do together. We can also use the count loop with an array. We can reference a random item in the array by index and repeat it the number of times specified in count. So in today's program, we're going to do each of these three repetitions. Let's get started by opening Alice and then from Alice opening the Chapter 5, Lesson 3, Funky Tigers program that has been started for you. Add your name and date in the comment block at the top and save the program in your student account. One procedure has already been done for you. That's the Funky Tigers. That's what each tiger is going to do. You can open or edit this code and take a look at it so you see what the Funky Tiger is going to do. His head's going to spin and he's going to resize and then size back again. We are going to add three more BIPRED procedures to the program and we're going to add three events. Each event is going to call one of these procedures. When you're finished, you're going to save the program and put the program in the backpack for a grade. Let's take a look at what procedure one is going to do. We're going to call it one at a time. We're going to create this procedure at the biped level because they're all tigers. We're going to use a parameter for the tigers array and this parameter will also be biped. In the code we're going to use the for each in loop and we're going to use the item inside the loop and you're going to see how we do this as we actually do the programming code together. So let's get into Alice. Here's our Funky Tigers program. If you want to take a look at the Funky Tiger code, you can see that the head is going to spin and that the tiger is going to get bigger and then smaller again and say Yahoo! And we're, So that's why it's a Funky Tiger. We're going to start by doing procedure number one. Let's go ahead and do this at the biped level. So I'm going to click on the biped tab. I'm going to create a procedure and we're going to call it one at a time. Remember for good um, procedures we're going to start with a lowercase letter but we can use uppercase capital letters as we go. Now the first thing we're going to do in this procedure is do the parameter. So this procedure is biped level. Our parameter is also going to be for bipeds. Let's click on it. And I'm going to come right here and see where it says is array. Let's go ahead and click on it. We get to do this for the first time and our type is still going to be biped. You're pretty used to doing this, so I'm going to go a little bit quickly on this part. Now we're going to give it a name. Remember an array holds more than one item, so I'm going to make it plural. I'm going to call it tigers. Now this isn't actually an array. This is a placeholder. Remember a parameter is a placeholder, so it's kind of substituting with the actual array is going to be, but it's letting the computer know that inside this procedure I will be using a parameter. A parameter will get passed in from an argument. So that right now this is not the actual array. I will not add any items here. It's simply a placeholder for when I actually have an array. So don't get confused about that. I'm just saying, hey procedure, expect an array to be transferred in. So I'm going to come down here to my for each in and I'm going to just drag it up. That's going to give me some questions right away because it knows it's going to be looking for an array. Well, what type is the array? It is a biped. So I'm going to come right here and go ahead and select biped. That's what it's going to be looking for. Then I'm going to come here to array. Is there one? Well, the placeholder is here, tigers. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now right here, this is where I'm going to access each individual item. So I'm actually going to just call this item. This item is one item in the array tigers. So don't use tigers here. Your actually will get an error if you try to, and it'll be a little bit confusing. So I'm talking about one item in my array tigers. So now I've got the control structure here. I've got my repetition loop, and all I need to do is say, what do I want to happen for each item in tigers? Well, I want it to be the funky tiger. So I'm going to come over here to funky tiger, and I'm going to drag it in here. Now right now this is going to happen for one tiger because I've got this right here. So here is maybe the most important step that you might forget, but I have to take item right here and I have to drag it for this. 
This is the only way that I'm actually going to access the item is by dragging it right here. So I've just completed my first procedure with an array parameter and with one of my special control structures. Now that we've got our first procedure done, in order to test it for our incremental development, we're actually going to go ahead and do an event. So our first event is going to be a mouse click for the yellow cylinder. When I click on it, I'm going to call one at a time. When I call this, the computer will ask me to then create the array. And when I create the array, it will determine the order of items when I do the tiger. So you can see over here, I'm creating an array. Here's each index, and I determine what's going to go in index 0, and index 1, index 2. You can see that I just went in order, but you could mix them up. So you determine what goes in each index. We're going to do this in our event. Let's get back into our Alice programming and create this event. I'm going to click on my tab for initialize event listeners, and I'm going to add a mouse click. So let's do the first one right here, click on object. And you've done this many times now, so you know that you have to start with an if statement. I'm not going to give a lot of instructions because you've been doing this for a long time now. I'm going to change my true over here. I'm going to go to a relational string. And when I did the cylinders, I changed their names. So yellow is pretty obvious right here. I'm going to go ahead and say yellow, yellow. But you know that I have to change one of them to the event. Otherwise, it will not work as a mouse click correctly. Now that I've got my mouse click structure here, what do I want to do? I want to call the uh, one at a time. Well, I don't see it listed over here. I have to click on one of these tigers. I can click on any of them. It doesn't matter which one. But you see that they all show up. They're bipeds. And here is one at a time. I'm going to drag it over. And then I have to choose custom array. And this is where I actually create the array. So right here it says add. And it's only going to look at bipeds. And here's the bipeds in my world. So this is where I determine the order. I'm going to go ahead and stick with the order, but if you want to just experiment and try a different order, go for it. So I've just added five items to my array, and I've done it in this specific order. So item, so index 0 has tiger 1, index 1 has tiger 2, index 2 has tiger 3, index 3 has tiger 4, and index 4 has tiger 5. I'm all ready to go. So our event looks like this. You can check your code. And when I run it, if I click on the yellow cylinder, it should do each tiger one at a time in the order that I specified. Okay, so make sure you've got that working correctly. Take a look at your code. And it should look like this. Now we're ready for procedure number two. We're going to call it all together. Once again, we're going to create this at the biped level. We're going to use a parameter for the tiger's array. And this parameter will be biped, just like the last one. In fact, this procedure is going to be just the same. The only difference is we're going to use each and together instead of for each in. And I must use the item inside the loop. Let's work on this one together. I'm going to click back here on biped and do another procedure. And this one I'm, time I'm going to call it all together. And my first step is to create this parameter that's going to be a placeholder. So you know it's not the real array. It's just telling the computer that you're going to pass in an array. I click on this. I'm going to choose biped. And I'm going to name it tigers. I can use the same name. No problem there. I think it will avoid confusion if you do. So I've got my parameter. Now I'm ready for my control structure. I'm going to call up each in together. Now it's going to ask me the same questions that the other one asked me. First of all, the item type. What type of parameter? What type of array? It's going to be biped. And do I have one already? Let's take a look. Sure enough, there's tigers. And then here, I'm pretty much always going to use item. That's a safe thing to do. And it's just talking about one item in this array. OK, 
Okay, I've got my control structure here, and what do I want it to do? Well, pretty much the same thing. I wanted to do funky tiger, so I'm going to drag this over just like I did before. And remember, the most important last step is I have to use item inside the loop. Otherwise, it's not going to go through the array. So I'm going to drag this right there. Now I've got my procedure. Check your code. Okay, it should look like this or something really similar. Now to test this procedure, once again, we're going to create an event. Event number two is going to be very similar to the first one. This time I'm going to do it for the blue cylinder and I'm going to call all together. I have to create the array again because it's a different event and once again you can determine the order of the items so it can be the same as you did for event one or you can mix them up. Let's work on this one together. I'm going to click on initialize event listeners again. I still have the yellow one and I'm going to add another one. Okay. And this time it's going to be for blue. I have to drag up my if statement. You guys already know how to do this part. So I'm just going to be silent and let you work on it. You can tell that everything has been named appropriately. I'm dragging in my event. I've got the first part done. Now what do I want to happen if I click on blue? Well I want to do uh, all together. I don't see it here. I have to click on a tiger, any of them. And now I see all together. I'm going to drag it over here and I must create my array. Okay, I'm just going to look for bipeds. I can choose the order. I'm going to go ahead and use the same order, but it doesn't have to be the same. So I've got all my tigers added, and here's my next event. Now when I run it, and if I click on the blue, they should all do it together. There we go. I still have yellow, so I could do one at a time in order. And I can do them all together. Okay, you'll want to double check your code. Make sure it looks like this. But this is the order that you choose, so yours might look a little different from mine. Now we're ready for our third procedure. In this procedure we're going to choose a random tiger in our array and have it do the funky tiger. So I'm going to use a count loop and I'm still going to need my biped parameter for the array and it's going to look the same but there's just a couple more steps in it in order to get to that random number. I have to do a couple placeholders so it might seem a little complicated at first but we can do it together. The one thing that you need to be careful of is when you're doing your range for random numbers that you don't use a number larger than the last index. So if I have five items, I can't pick a number between one and six because there is no index six. You will get an error. You need to be careful about that. Okay, let's get into Alice and do this one together. I'm going to come here to biped. And I'm going to create another procedure. I'm going to call this random tiger. Now, my first step, as always, is to create my parameter placeholder. It is an array. It is going to be biped. And I'm going to call it tigers. Now, I'm not going to use one of the specialty loops this time. I am actually going to use just the regular count. And you can determine how many times do you want to get a random tiger. I'm going to use five. That's, there's nothing special about that. That's just how many I want to do. So you can determine for yourself. Maybe you want to do it 10 times, only 3 times. You determine how many times you want to get a random tiger and make them funky. Okay, now I've got this. The next, what I'm going to do inside the loop is the funky tiger. So I click it there. Now this is going to do the same tiger 5 times because it's got the word this in there. In order to pick something from the array, I have to change this. I'm going to come here and notice that my array shows up right here. And it's going to ask me which index. Well, you have to pick one, but it's going to be a placeholder that we can then change. I'm going to come here to my array. I'm just going to pick any of these numbers. Doesn't matter which one. And then I can change this to a random number. So now that I've got a number here, I can come here. My choices include random number. Now, when we've done this in the past, we'll use this last one. For an array, 
The first one's going to be really handy because notice it starts at 0 and our first index is 0. And it's going to exclude the top number. So if I know that the size is 5, I can use 5 and it won't ever get there. So we're going to use this top one. And I can just pick any number, but I do want it to be 5. So I might have to actually type it. And there I go. So I'm going to pick a random number between 0 and 5, but it's not going to include 5. Perfect for our index. Okay, that's all there is to it. So check your code, and it should look like this, except for that you could have a different number here if you wanted. Now in order to test this procedure, we're going to do our third event. It's going to be just like the other ones. This time it's going to be for the red cylinder. It's going to call random tiger, and you're going to create an array. You should be pretty good at this by now, but we're going to go ahead and do it together anyways, just in case. So I'm here with my initialize event listeners, and let's create our third event. Also a mouse click. And I need to drag up my if statement. I need to make it for the red cylinder. And I need to include event. Okay, and what do I want to happen here? Well, I want to call the random tiger. Well, you don't see it here, so once again, I'm going to click on one of these. Here's funky, and here's random tiger. And I have to create the array. Put them in the order that you want. And there we go. Let's go ahead and test this. I'm going to click on the red cylinder, and it should get five random tigers to be funky. There's one. Two, three, four, five. And you see that sometimes tigers were picked more than once and some of them weren't picked at all. That's just how it works with random numbers. If I click it again, you should get five random tigers. One, two, three, four, five. If I keep clicking, eventually all of them will be selected at least once. All right, let's check your code. Does it look like this? And let's talk about the one possible mistake you might make, and that sometimes you'll just be scratching your head saying, why doesn't it work? And it's going to be this right here, not using item in the special control structure. So this is what it would look like if it's wrong. This is what it looks like if it's right. You see it's a very small distinction here. It's one that's easy to overlook, and it's easy to forget. So let's go back into our code and change it the wrong way and see what happens. So I'm here at one at a time, the first one that we did, and I've got item here. It is correct. Let's make it wrong. So I'm going to click on this instead of item. Moving item there was the last thing, but something that's easy to forget. Okay, this is uh, linked to the event for the yellow cylinder. So I'm going to click on the yellow cylinder. Now this is supposed to go one at a time, all in order. Let's see if it does happen. I'm going to click on the yellow cylinder. Okay, it's not going one at a time, is it? It's just doing one tiger. Well, why is that? Because I didn't use item. So let's fix that. If you notice that that's happening, that's only doing one tiger, then come back here and look for this one little mistake. Drag item in there. Let's try it again. Now it works correctly. So that's how important that, li that little step is. And now if you're going to be a good tester, go ahead and try it. Clicking on your cylinders in different orders. Everything should work fine. And then you know that you're ready to save and turn in your program. So do your testing and finishing up. And I hope you've enjoyed this program. We're going to do another one that's going to be very similar for just more practice because there's a lot of new steps when we work with arrays.